Hello, Papua New Guinea, and welcome to Sports Scene, proudly brought to you by Coca-Cola. We are here on location at Sir John Guy's Stadium, the home of the 2015 Pacific Games, and what better place to bring you all the sporting action that is Sports Scene. This week we have a great show for you lined up, which mainly dominated by football, and why not? It has been a big week for football with World Cup qualifiers going on around the world and some interesting results. France going down the Ukraine, two goals to nil, and they need to come back in that second leg. Portugal beating Sweden, one goal to nil as well. And our friends from the Oceania, New Zealand, going down 5-1 to Mexico. Not to worry, those second legs are coming up this week, so stay tuned for those. And uh, we also have in the world of football, our under-23 team flying off to Indonesia today. They took off to take part in an invitational tournament. They'll be up against Indonesia, Maldives and Laos in the coming week, and we look forward to hearing some good results from that team. Well, it is time now to go to our sporting brief, so let's take a look at the sporting action from this weekend. In the sports brief this week, the NTD Darts Grand Finals took place on Saturday at the Sporting Hotel in Port Moresby. In the plate grand final, Tarus defeated OC Uncle six stars to three. While in the trophy grand final, Lakatoy team two six stars defeated Pullets team one six stars to two. The presentation night will be held this Saturday. The PNG Barramundis have begun their International Cricket Council 2020 qualifier campaign on a winning note. PNG beat Kenya by four wickets. Geraint Jones was named man of the match for his 73 round partnership with Kilapala. The softball, the Bassini Diamonds on the weekend saw in the women's B grade one tots go down to Admiralty 8 7. Chebu beat Gazelle 11 10. Wolves defeated Stingers 11 9, while Bears blitz Yokomo 15 8. In the A grade, Bears 8 beat Yokomo 6. One Dogs had a victory over Admiralty 9-3. Gazelle went down to Chebu 7-6 and Stingers recorded a win against Wolves. Meanwhile, in the men's, in the A grade division, Brown Eagles drew with Kopex 5-0. Stingers thrashed Manta Ray 7-1. Yokomo thumped Wolves 10-1. Gazelle defeated PNG Power 11-8. And Brothers blitz Bears 10-1. And the B grade division, Brothers beat Bears 16-2. Gazelle were victorious over PNG Power 7-1, Eagles defeated Copex 8-1, Stingers forfeited Manta Rays and Wolves pipped Yokomo 10-9. Well, there you have it this week's sporting briefs and how about those Barra Mondays over in Dubai for the T20 World Cup qualifiers. Some dominating performances, some great results so far. Their first two matches beating Kenya and then beating the Netherlands and in that match against the Netherlands, Tony Ura, 100 of 58 balls. You can't get any better than that and that comes off a pre-qualifying tournament uh, win against Ireland as well. So the Barras are looking good, and fingers crossed they continue their winning streak with the rest of their matches. Good luck to the Barra Mondays. And while we're on the subject of cricket, the king of cricket, the king of Indian cricket, Sachin Tendulkar, uh, played his last match over the weekend. He retired after 20 years in the sport, and he's one of the greatest batsmen, if not the greatest batsman in the world. He had some fantastic results over his career, which included uh, 15,921 runs in the Test Arena with an average of 53.78 and an overall average of 48.53 with 34,357 runs in all forms of the game. His highest score, 248 against Bangladesh, and he scored 100 Test centuries. Well, there you have it, the Prince, and he's referred to as the God in India and there was a very famous comment from one of his fans when they asked what they think Sachin Tendulkar is going to do after he retires and he replied, what does God do when he retires? I don't know. And Tendulkar, he definitely will be missed in the sport of cricket and in the sports world as well, one of the true champions of sport globally. We're going to go to a break but when we return we have action from the Besta Cup. Well, viewers, it is time to bring this show to an end. And thank you to Coca-Cola for bringing sports scene to your screens every week. And also thank you to Coca-Cola for bringing those 500 mil bottles of Coke for only three kina. Make sure you get to your stores and buy some of those. Find us on Facebook. A reminder again, sports scene is on Facebook. Find us, like us, comment, and post a post on Facebook. It's going to be great. Tune into Hotspot this Thursday at 9 p.m. for more sporting news. And of course, tune into MTV throughout the week. We do have the semifinals of the Rugby League World Cup going to bring... Brought to you live, we're down to the semi-finals. Four teams left, 
Fiji taking on Australia, and that should be an interesting match. Billy Slater, of course, injured in their quarterfinal match, but I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. They got Inglis, they got Jared Hayne, they got so many other players can fill that spot. And of course, in the other semi-final, should be a great match. England taking on the defending champions, New Zealand. So it's going to be live action from the Rugby League World Cup on MTV, and of course, the final to follow that, so make sure you tune in for all of that. Well, there you have it, the Rugby League World Cup action on MTV. It is time to say goodbye from this week's sports scene. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week. This time, same place, Monday evenings, for all your sporting action here on MTV. MTV.